everybody, Rich Lang down in the bunker. Hey, today we're going to talk about flooding and the different types of flooding, what you need to do before, during, and after a flood that only protect you, your house, your belongings, and your family. So let's get right into it. So there's many forms of flooding. I think a lot of people, when they think of flooding right off the bat, they think of overflowing rivers uh, or lakes. Um, or uh, large lakes that uh, when there's bad storms coming through and the wave action, you know, flooding. Uh, but, I mean, there's also, you know, street flooding from heavy rains. Not too long ago, we had streets downtown here uh, that were under, you know, a foot and a half of water. And it was actually going into people's basements. And, and that was just from a heavy storm uh, water where I'd never seen, you know, accumulate before. It happened, just happened to accumulate. So you don't really know. <clears throat> and don't forget about water uh, from uh, your gutters overflowing, going down along your foundation into your basement, and your sump pump's not working during a storm, uh, and all that rainwater that's uh, supposed to be taken away from your foundations goes into your basement. So you got to look at flooding from all different angles, but let's look at some tips that I've uh, found on the internet. Elevate electrical outlets if you have an older home, because newer homes... If they build basements, they're going to have, uh, there's requirements to have the outlets up high enough. You can check the exact height uh, for your area. Um, if you have a sump pump, add a battery backup with an alarm. And you can also have that alarm keyed into your phone. Um, if you've got room, consider a, a, a second sump pump in case, even though the battery backup isn't needed, the first sump pump goes out and the electrical is still working. It's always an option. Uh, waterproof your basement. Store items up off the floor. As simple as a couple two by fours. Uh, just get it up off the floor. Make sure your floor drains are working. Um, I have mine capped uh, just for certain reasons. We, we're up on a hill, so we really don't have that much of a problem. Although we've had some water in our basements, basically seepage, which you'll also get. And getting your stuff up off the ground will keep your boxes from getting that seepage water. Um, Make sure all drains are clear and can be capped off because if it's raining really hard and for a long time, uh, you could get water coming up your drains instead of water going out your drains. Uh, also have like a, a wet dry vac available at all times. Uh, pay attention to flood warnings and if your area is, uh, uh, if your area is sighted, move furniture and other items up to a safe place. So what I'm saying by that is if they're saying that your area is in a flood warning um, potential, uh, if you don't already have stuff up, get it up. Uh, get electronics up. Uh, you should probably also, you know, pick up your washer, your dryer, your heater, and your, um, your water heater also, and your furnace uh, when you put it in. Mine's up on a pedestal. All my stuff's up on pedestals. Um, let's see. Purchase flood insurance. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, pack an emergency kit used for evacuation or if you're trapped in your home. And what I mean by trapped in your home, you're just going to stay in your home. You can get around and everything, but the floodwaters are coming in. Uh, you want to make sure that you have food, emergency supplies, first aid, uh, lots of water, lots of water. <coughs> the good kind of water, the water you can drink. Uh, if told to leave, leave. Just get out of there. Um, you know your area. Some some people that have lived in certain flood-prone areas for years, they know. They can tell by the rain. They can tell by the weather that it, it's time to go. Um, have sandbagging materials on hand and at the ready. Uh, when you get a storm warning, it's not the time to go to Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever and get you, get your supplies. And uh, they may not even have them. So what is the difference between a flood watch and a flood warning? A watch is conditions are right for flooding. Flood warning, flooding is happening now. All right, so here we go. Before it happens, what are you going to do tomorrow? Well, tomorrow, when you get up, you're going to find out if you live in a floodplain or do it today. Um, call your insurance agent. Check your insurance policy. Also, see if you qualify for federal flood insurance, which you get at a reduced rate, and it really helps you out. Uh, but research this now and have it available, purchase it or whatever uh, before the spring storms start because they've uh, already happened down south. Matter of fact, there's been some 
horrible tornadoes down south. All right, before the flood, assemble disaster supplies. And this is a dedicated supplies, just like any other de disaster we've talked about in uh, stockpiling and storing for stuff. Water, one gallon per person per day. Food, three days of food per person. Cash, small bills. <laughs> Uh, medication and first aid supplies and for people that are on uh, different kinds of uh, medication check with your doctor and your pharmacy to see if you can get like an extra week or two supplies just to have around your insurance company probably won't cover it but to pay out of pocket for it might be a good idea unless it's really expensive uh, make sure you have clothing and shoes at the ready uh, a battery powered radio or a crank radio uh, is really good to have by uh, so you can uh, follow the weather channels or uh, you know local stations that are going to give the weather forecast always flashlight lanterns and extra batteries to have by have those flashlights by your bed have those shoes by your bed um, strong sturdy shoes uh, and copies of important documents uh, you should have if you don't have a safe like this one right here or a wall safe which we have in the other room uh, to have them up and out of the way. Uh, make copies, get a safety deposit box at your bank and put those away. You can also buy small little boxes that are about yay big. They're fireproof. You can put all your documents in there and store them in a place up high. Um, evacuation prep. All right, prepping, preparing for that. Identify where to go. Identify alternative routes and plan for your pets. Because remember, um, depending on where you go, especially in evacuation, uh, shelter or whatever your pets may not be welcome uh, so figure something else out uh, and always have extra fuel uh, if it's safe to do so I mean you're not going to store extra fuel if you live in an apartment but if you have a house don't store it in your house obviously outbuildings garage uh, whatever just store that outside so you have it at all times all right you want to review your family disaster plan, and that's basically your evacuation prep and the stuff you need to do before the flooding, during, and after. Discuss with all family members. You want everybody in the family to know what your plan is. Because again, like I've said in other videos, you may not be there. You may be at work. You may be out of town. Your family needs to know where everything is. All right? And i uh, probably say this later in here, but remember... Don't have your supplies cluttered, have them in one location, have them accessible at all times, and don't use them for other stuff, all right? Write down your plan and have available. Decide where to meet if you get separated or if you have family members like college students, or, you know, even high school students way out doing different things. If uh, the flooding all of a sudden happens, because it can happen in a second, we know out west there's flash flooding, um... I mean, overflows on dams and they have to do an emergency uh, release of water that can cause problems downstream. And have a contact person out of the area or out of state that everybody can call and say, hey, this is where I'm at. Uh, how's everybody else doing? You know, just so you're uh, well aware of it. Protecting your property for the flood. Move valuables and furniture to a higher level, obviously electronics especially. Secure hazardous materials, and we're talking about paint, gas, and oil. Have those in outbuildings and, and, and have them in uh, cabinets that either close and specifically lock would be really good too. Um, disconnect electrical items or shut off circuits, but don't be in the water when you do it. Do it ahead of time, all right? Secure outside items. Put in a building or tie them down. You want them floating away, um, because you'll never see them again. And they may also cause damage to other people's property or even your property. Close and protect openings like vents, cellar doors, and basement windows. All right, and that's where your sandbags and stuff come in. Okay, so during the flood, monitor your surroundings. Turn on weather radio, TV, or weather.gov or weatherwatchusgs.com just to monitor what's going on. They're going to keep you up to date uh, local services will also do that, too. If you're told to leave, leave. Evacuate. Follow the recommended routes. Avoid disaster areas. Watch for washed-out roads, closed roads, mudslides, and wires down. Be especially careful driving at night. If your vehicle stalls, get out 
and go to higher ground. You shouldn't be driving through the water in the first place, but at night it's kind of hard to, to see it, you know, so you may get caught. But never drive through floodwaters. Roads may be washed out. You can lose control in a few inches of water, and cars can float in less than two feet of water. And you know your surroundings. You know the low-lying areas, and you know some of these roads can get uh, covered up with water pretty quick, and some of it can flow pretty quickly uh, across, and uh, you can lose control quite quick, quickly, and don't drive around barricades. As a firefighter, uh, several times in our area, we went and rescued people that were in cars because they went around barricades because they didn't want to turn around and go the long way, and uh, they ended up in the ditch, and uh, some of them were very close to perishing. All right, evacuating. Move quickly. Save yourself, not your belongings, if, if you get involved in a flash flood. Move to a safe area. Know your area's high point. Right now, tomorrow, next couple of days, look around. Where are your high points? You'll know. You'll know where they are, okay? And get to those areas. Keep your family together, all right? If you, as all your families together, stay together. Do not separate. If your family's already separated, have those locations where you can get together. Use that out of area or out of state contact to do that. Before you leave, shut off your gas, your water, and your electrical services. All right, lock doors and windows, and you go to the specific area that you are directed to go to. Don't go someplace else because there may be a reason you shouldn't go there because maybe other people in the area are going to that uh, specific location. All right, never try to swim or walk through water. Six inches of moving water can knock you off your feet. Anybody that's, you know, as a kid uh, has played in, you know, creeks or whatever, you know how fast that water is and how slippery the rocks can be. Never allow kids to play in high water, by storm drains, creeks, or rivers during flooding. Again, creeks and rivers will rise quickly. Storm, uh, the storm sewers uh, and gullies and the different uh, stuff that goes under roads, uh, you can get sucked in there real quickly and you may not come out the other side. Uh, do not go after a victim. Throw them a flotation device. I just heard in the news where um, a family member went after another family member, and unfortunately both of them drowned, which is horrible. All right, after the flood, do not return until told to do so. Watch out for washed-out roads, mudslides, and down lines again. Do not go into buildings if it's still flooded or or that building you can tell is damaged. It could be knocked off its foundation. It could be leaning. Don't go in there. It's not worth it. Whatever is inside that building is not worth your life. <coughs> Wear sturdy shoes because there's going to be debris and nails and, and boards and glass and all kinds of stuff and metal like that around. And you uh, you mess your feet up and you're you're done for. You can't walk around, especially if you're cut and then you got to get to emergency services. Use only battery-powered lighting, check for fire hazards, and before turning on utilities, have a professional check for hazards and damage to the equipment. If your stuff was flooded and it was flooded for a while, there's going to be all kinds of debris and rotten water, and some of the electrical connections will already have started to corrode. Uh, you don't want to turn those on for fear of electrocution or uh, explosions from uh, gas because it's not working. Uh, properly. Uh, wells should be pumped out and water tested before you drink from it. Pump out basements, but only pump out your basements one third at a time to avoid structural damage. I didn't know that. I just figured you put the hose down there and pump it all out. But the pressure uh, from outside and in, you want to pump out a little bit at a time. Uh, clean and disinfect all that got what and remove sheetrock, otherwise known to most people as drywall and carpeting to eliminate the mold. You're not going to save it. Just get it out, throw it out, and as far as your drywall, come up, or she right, come up above the, uh, at least six inches above where it got wet, and you can start all over again. You're probably going to want to do the electrical anyhow, and redo that. Making repairs and improvements. Follow building codes. All right, that's very important. Use flood-resistant materials and techniques. Look at the internet and the internet. I'm not going to go into that. Elevate, 
electrical above potential flood heights. Unless it looks stupid because it's like this high up, you know. And if you got to come this high up in your room, uh, maybe you ought to move and go someplace else. Um, elevate washer, dryer, furnace, and water heater. And, and I told you, you know, you can platform them. Put them up on platforms. Another nice thing is uh, you don't have to bend over so far when you're doing uh, laundry because it's up a little bit higher. Uh, put everything on two by four so it's not a bad deal. Consider elevating the, your entire structure. Now, if you're really into where you live, you can do that. You can, you can elevate your structure up higher. Uh, whole towns have done that. Uh, also install backflow preventers on your sewer system. Sewer systems uh, have a tendency to back up when they're overwhelmed with water. All right, some final thoughts here. Do you have gutters around your house? Make sure they are clean and downspouts are clean. Have drains and exterior stairwells. Do you? Keep debris from collecting over those drains and have the plumbing periodically rotted out. Does your property slope away from your home or is your home lower than your property around you because that's where all the water is going to go. It's going to come right back down, right in your foundation and any kind of crack you have in your foundation, no matter how big or small, it's coming into your house, into your basement. All right. Do you have window wells? If you have window wells, keep them clean and drains clear. Also, covering them will divert water away. And make sure you get heavy grade uh, window well uh, covers. Uh, people are gonna step on them, animals are gonna step on them, and you don't want them coming into your window wells. Um, have a checklist of things to do before flooding or evacuation. You know what's gonna happen uh, you're going to forget stuff and you wish you would have had it. So just have like a checklist, just like kind of like a checklist like this, you know, that I've got going here. Okay, I got to do this, 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 and this. All right, I'm all set. And I've, I've packed up this, this, and this. And you're good to go. Um, do you have a septic system? Install alarms, have a pre preventable maintenance schedule, and have it pumped out on a regular basis. It also helps it from being backed up. Uh, secure all fuel tanks and properly store fuel and oil cans. We talked about that earlier. Fuel and oil cans, if you got cabinets or whatever, secure those. Uh, you're, a, a lot of people in the country have uh, you know, fuel tanks for their tractors or for whatever, and they're up on kind of a pedestal for you in the city that have never seen this. Uh, secure those guys. Uh, make, uh, send it, uh, make sure they're secured to the ground. Um, also have a backup water supply and toilet system. The worst you can do is not be able to use your toilet. So um, you can look on the internet for uh, emergency toilet systems and basically it's a bucket, garbage bags and, uh, and such. Have sandbagging supplies on hand and ready to use. You can use sand or dirt. Bags can be cloth or plastic fiber, plastic liners, and sheets are also good to put over your sandbags. Uh, and what I suggest is go to YouTube and watch the videos on properly placing and securing sandbag systems to keep the water away from your house. So that's really about it. I mean, uh, you know, what else can I say? Flood, flooding is rough. Flooding destroys a lot of stuff and it's just water. It's like they always said, water and fire are two of the man's greatest things and two things that can really uh, destroy you and your property. property. Anyhow, a couple of acknowledgments here. I always like to do this. Uh, USGS website, FEMA website, ready.gov, American Red Cross, weatherwatch.usgs.com. And that's going to kind of track the storms for you, so you can kind of follow along there. Uh, National Safety Council. Habitat for Humanity, and various uh, different university sites I use to uh, put this uh, video together. So that's it. That's all about flooding. I uh, hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, please like it and make comments. If you have any suggestions about uh, more videos regarding flooding or other videos, please make that comment too. And please subscribe. Please pass this video along to all your friends and tell them to subscribe. Uh, and don't forget that uh, we have a Facebook page uh, called Prep You, and we throw little things on there and pictures and stuff like that whenever we get a chance, especially funny pictures we try to put out about how people have uh, uh, 
uh, prepped and gotten prepared for different things. So, but that's it for now. Uh, like we always say, be aware of your surroundings. Be prepared to be on your own for up to 72 hours and probably beyond that would be a really good idea. And prep like your life depends on it because we all know that it does. Thank you very much. See you next time.